So I'm going to configure my SSL VPN. I'm going to go up here to Wizards, and I'm going to start my SSL VPN wizard. Now, for this example, I'm just going to do clientless. So I'm going to leave the AnyConnect for you know, another example. I'll click on Next. I'm going to create a connection profile name. Now, I want this connection profile name to be something that sort of indicates my group. So I'll call this Engineering. And this is going to be on the outside interface. I'm not going to use a certificate right now. I would use a certificate if I wanted to create my own certificate, and then I'm going to end up, um, well, actually, I can use the default certificate here, or I can select a certificate from a trusted third party. Either way, I'll go ahead and select it here, and then you'll see what I get when I make a connection in. This is a certificate that I installed uh, from my CA server. Now I'm going to create a connection group alias. Uh, the reason that I'm con configuring this alias is so that I can have a drop down list or a direct URL to access my web VPN portal or my SSL VPN portal. So I'm going to call this engineering. You'll notice now that I have a direct URL. Okay. And if I'm going to use ASDM on the same interface, i got to put slash admin now. I also want to display the group login alias on the login page. This will give me the drop down that I'll use to select which group. Now I'm going to authenticate users to a local database, and I'm just going to call this user1 and a password of Cisco. Just keep it simple. add that user. I'll click on next. I'm going to create a new group policy. I don't want to use the default group policy. I want to be able to control policy inheritance. So I'm going to call this, actually let's just call it ENG for engineers. Now a bookmark list. I'm going to go ahead and click on manage. I've, I've created a couple of bookmark lists. Let me just delete these out of here. These are just samples. I'm going to add a bookmark list, and I'm going to call this Engineer Marks. And I'm going to add a bookmark, and I'll give this a title. I'm going to say this. Uh, this is Telnet, or actually Browse to Server. And I'm going to say this is 10.0.206.10 is my server. You can give it a subtitle. You can upload a thumbnail if you'd like to. I am not going to enable Smart Tunnel yet. I'll do that in another example for this particular link. Allow the users to bookmark the link, and then under Advanced Options, I can you know, make some changes there. It's not opening for some reason but I'll, I'll just leave it for now, it's fine. This makes the point, there we go. So I can, I can define certain options, post parameters, gets, posts, things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay, and I've got browse to server, and I'm gonna create another one, telnet to server, actually not yet. Let's do file shares, and let's use SIFs. And I'm going to go to 10.0.206.10 slash C dollar sign. And I'll just give them access to the C drive. And I'll go ahead and OK that. Um, some other things that we could do in here with these bookmarks is we can, we, can, we can install these plugins in Flash. We have to download these. For example, VNC, Telnet, SSH, um, RDP, FTP. We download and install these, and then we can create bookmarks to access these different values. I'll add those later. So what I'm going to do is just leave those two for now, and then I'm going to click on OK. And I've got engineer marks selected. And then I'll click on Next. We can see that uh, Engineering is the group. We've got all that stuff configured. We'll go ahead and click Finish, which will deploy all this 
uh, web VPN or SSL VPN configuration out to the ASA. And then let's go ahead and look at the group. Let's go to our remote access VPNs and let's go to clientless SSL VPN access and look at our connection profile. So there's engineering which I just created. It's going to authenticate locally. I'm allowing SSL VPN access on the outside on port 443. I'm allowing users to select a connection profile. Okay. Now what I can do is I can go in and I can look at the portal and there's my bookmarks, there's my engineering bookmarks and I can modify these bookmarks. I can add some client server plugins. The way that you do that is you simply click import, you define what the plugin is, like let's say I have Citrix and then I browse to it on my local file system and I think I may have let's see if I have ICA on here I don't remember if I I have my VNC SSH RDP there's my ICA plugin and it looks like it's a zip let's see if I need to unzip that I don't know that I've done the ICA plugin. Let's just select it and see if it's going to import. So it looks like it was imported. So now I've got ICA and I can give a, a, a bookmark now to a Citrix uh, device that they can access. So got all that. I can go in now and I can also customize my uh, interface. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of customization. And let's go ahead and add. And I'll create a custom object. I'm going to call this um, Engineer Custom. I'm not going to apply this yet. We're going to just use the default customization for now. But now that I've got this Engineer Custom, um, I can actually go in and and uh, apply this and then I can I can edit the interface down here on the bottom I can set up that on-screen keyboard that um, would the on-screen keyboard would force people to, to use the on-screen keyboard rather than the physical keyboard so it protects me against keystroke loggers so let's apply this and that creates my customization it's not applied anywhere yet but see I can now open that customization and I can make modifications to it. So I can go engineers VPN service and I can save these different values. I can go, let's go to just the login form. Actually, let's go to the portal and the browser window. engineering at Ascolta. Save that. And then I can go title panel and let's just change the colors here to like a blue. What am I doing here? Blue. There we go. And then the background will leave as a, uh, let's make it a little bit. Let's go kind of out like that. There we go. Okay, so we changed that a little bit and I'll save that. Now remember, I'm not applying this yet. So I'm going to go ahead, I, I saved all of that, and I can close that. And that just modified the engineering custom. But right now, I'm just using defaults. So if I wanted to make the change, what I do is go down here to Group Policies. I could edit my engineering group. And then I can go to Portal here. And let's see, change my... Am I missing it? 
more right here, customization, and I can change it from default customization to engineering. I'm going to go in once with default, and then I'll change it to engineering and see if, see if it works. So at this point, I think we're ready to, to test. Let's go on over here to my remote office. We can close out ASDM here. We don't need it. And let's go to HTTPS uh, 192.168.205.1, which is my ASA's interface. It's telling me that that page cannot be displayed. Let's go find out why. Show IP, make sure that I got the right address. Ah, at the wrong address. It's 205.2. Okay, so I should get prompted to accept the certificate. Remember, I applied that certificate that was already installed. I didn't need to do that. I could have let it use its default self sign, but let's see what we're going to get here. All right, so there we view the certificate. This was issued by CA, which was one that was already installed. I can install it here if I want to, um, because this is a certificate that um, is is not is going to survive a reboot on the ASA. I can go ahead and install it, and it shouldn't prompt me after that. But I'll say yes, and now I should get my login page. I've noticed a little bit of lag. On my initial connections here but let's there we go so there's my engineering group and I have user one with the password Cisco and notice up here the title it's just SSL VPN service click on login and there we go so I get these are all the plugins that have been installed Here's the URLs that I put in my bookmark list so I can browse to a server and I can access file shares. I could actually directly browse to a device if I knew its address. Let's browse to a server and there we can see that it took us to the server but notice this is content rewriting. This is mangling. See the plus CSCO? So I'm actually web browsing to that server. This is just a static web page on that server. And if I want to go home, I hit my home button, it takes me back. If I want to access file shares, I click on the file shares, and it wants my authentication. So I can't remember. Let's go see what I've got there. I can't remember. Uh, what do I want to do here? I want to go into my users. And I want to see what users I have on here. And I'm drawing a blank, so give me a minute here. <laughs> Actually, you know how I know how to get in here. Go to manage and then go to my users. That's how I usually do it. So I have B Carol and I think my password's Cisco. Let's try that. So we'll go B Carol and Cisco submit. And that should give me the C drive as long as I'm an administrator on there. So give this a moment. Oh, it thinks. And there we go. So now I have access to all those files. So pretty easy. And it's all through the SSL connection. So that's kind of nice. Let's go ahead and log out. Let's apply a couple of other options here.